My passion for motorcycling started very, very soon. Since I have memory, I, I just wanted to ride. When they suddenly found that I was riding motorcycles and racing myself, it was quite a surprise to everyone. You are riding motorcycles? And I'm like, yeah. Why, like, why is that so crazy, you know? I was really like on, on fire and practicing every day in my parents' garden. The work you put into it, you have to be trying. Women do it just as good and sometimes even better. I'm a racer, so I love racing, I love the pressure, I love to give my 100%. I was even better than before getting pregnant. That has been very good for me. The Daily Express, the Daily Mail, all those people made a big fuss about it. Every year it's becoming a more female sport. It was a very different world, but we saw it changing and we were contributors to that. My name is Han Yuhai. I'm 19 years old, soon 20, and I'm from Israel. I've been riding on motorcycles nearly since I can remember. It has been my passion for so long. I actually started with off-road and motocross, and from there enduro, and then I realized I, there's this whole new world that is called road racing. And I completely fell in love with it, and now I'm trying my luck here. I wasn't interested in motorcycle at all. Like I didn't like watching races or anything like that. And when I was eight years old, my father asked me if I want to go get the, a license. And then I was like, but that, I don't know how to ride. And he put me in the side with one of his friends that has this uh, Peewee 50, I think it was, with the two extra wheels on the side. And I was driving it really like, badly and he was talking with me in the speaker in the helmet being like turn left turn right you got this okay and then I passed the test somehow that day I realized this is what I want to do we took one small bike from a friend and I was riding it non-stop the entire weekend with my father in the car behind me chasing me when he saw that I was so so uh, passionate about it he decided to surprise me and buy me a bike and my father asked me, do you want to try and race? And I said, yeah, why not? I mean, let's give it a try. There's this moment where you stand on the gate and there's so many kids next to you. And suddenly I was getting these nerves, you know, this tickly feeling in your toes and your fingers and your whole body suddenly completely in it. And I think that's the moment when I realized that I really, really want to keep doing it. Really want to keep feeling this adrenaline feeling. I'm Chiara Fontanesi, I'm 28 years old, I'm from Italy. I'm a professional motocross rider, I'm a mom. I'm six-time motocross world champion. I started riding in the world championship when I was only 15 years old. And I was riding a 125 in 2009. I remember I didn't even speak English and I was very young. Uh, I won my first munch at the last round in Lirop. That was a big surprise for me and I was very happy. And from then I worked very hard to reach my dreams and start to win the World Championship. My very first world title has been uh, in 2012 when I was only 18 years old. <laughs> I'm Andrea Coleman, founder of Two Wheels for Life and Riders for Health. All the members of my family rode motorcycles, raced motorcycles and were in the motorcycle engineering side of motorcycle racing. So I saw it as something that was my world. I'd been saving up so I could buy a motorcycle so I could ride it on the day I was 16 and when I had a license. Once I was riding, I realised how important it was to me, that feeling of freedom and of independence. But then it was later that I realised that 
motorcycle racing was something I really wanted to do. My family were so focused on their own motorcycle racing and developing engines and racing themselves that I don't think anybody even noticed me. I had neither support nor anybody trying to prevent me from doing it. So it was just something I developed myself. My racing career spanned three years, 1969 to 1972. I owned my own TZ250 and um, I had my own van, I had my own mechanic. So, you know, I'd finished second, third, you know, fifth, all that kind of stuff. But I had some talent, but I wasn't, you know, I was never going to be a world champion. Nevertheless, I can certainly spot talent in other people. I met a motorcycle racer from Northern Ireland, Tom Perrin, my first husband. He really had talent. I was the manager of the team. I was the person who got the sponsorship. And we really developed a very strong team for him. My name is Iris Kramer and I'm the FIM Women's Trial Section Advisor. This is the first race this season where we had prior two girls with us. My father is a former motocross rider and also my grandfather was riding motocross and flat tuck racing and that's how I came into it as I grew up in the paddock. My father has two girls and he loved me that I got interested into racing. First I just started practicing for fun and then it started really like burning in myself and I wanted to be practicing every day. My father and my grandfather set up a practice area in the garden, so when I came home from school I could straight go to practice and they never pushed me. This was really myself which wanted to ride. My family supported me 110%. My father was always minding for me, always helping me. My parents spent nights, years in the camper coming with me to racing, so I got 110% support. I'm Laia Sanz and I'm from Barcelona. 30 years I've been racing. Since I have memory, I, I saw my dad and my, my brother riding their, their bikes and I, I just wanted to go with them. At the time I started riding bikes, it was not a normal thing. Uh, only the, the boys were riding bikes. Support from my family it was crucial. I think uh, I'm where I am now because, because of them. They gave me the chance to write and to follow my dreams and they've been always supporting me. I beat all the boys from my age. There I realized that I could be a, a good writer and, and from there, for me, it started to get more serious. I was quite good in the Spanish Championship and, and also in Junior World Championship I got some podiums. From there I, I start to, to train more and to be more focused and I realized maybe I, I could be professional. To race and to win, it feels amazing. When you get used to that feeling, you, you just want more. To be competitive as an athlete, it takes a different discipline. You have to be very, very focused on you and really, really put yourself into it. You have this something more in writing that I always like to say about writers, that you just see this spark in them. But there is no writer that arrives to the top without working really, really hard every single day, if it's training in the gym or training on the bike. And of course, I had to work hard to get to where I am. To do this as a job, you need to be competitive. But of course I feel so lucky and, and I love what I do and this is the, the biggest motivation I could have. In 2016, when I lost my very first title after winning four titles in a row, it ate me very bad, but 
The day after I lost, I was already back at in working very hard and coming back with a victory the year after has been amazing. When I was riding, people put so many rocks in front of me and said, girls can't ride a world championship. You might be a good trial rider, but you will never arrive to the top. If people tell me that I can't do something, this is the biggest motivation that I want to prove them that I can do this. First time I came here was, I think, my third race in Europe. For me, the first time I arrived here, coming outside of Europe, uh, you see all these great riders and they all know how to tell their mechanics what is wrong with their bike or how to explain their feelings. And it's all these things that you have to keep up and learn so, so fast because they have been doing it for the, their entire life. I want a podium. I want to be able to fight with the front group. And this year I can see that, it's, that I'm getting there. If you've looked at the races I used to go to at Brands Hatch or Mallory Park, it's a very different world from now. It's hugely professional athletes in the motorcycle racing paddock now. Whereas then it was really, you know, people arriving very little money, but they were really, really passionate about what they wanted to do. Women were certainly in that paddock then, but they were always in a supportive role. I started riding, uh, female classes or championships didn't exist, but for me it was something normal. I had a lot of friends, they were boys, but it was something normal for me. I always trained with them, I, I had good friends. So for me it was maybe more strange when I started competing uh, with women class because I've been, during all my career, I've been uh, racing with, with men. Men didn't like it if I was faster than them, but, you know, they didn't stop me. If you're racing a motorcycle, you're racing a motorcycle, you've got your helmet on, you're, you know, doing it. But it was the outside world, you know, the Daily Express, the Daily Mail, all those people made a big fuss about it. I mean, you know, the pictures on the front page and all that kind of stuff. When I was eight years old racing a mix, I never saw a girl riding. The first time I saw a girl was going out to Germany to race and they were all older than me and I was like, wow, there's actually other girls riding, that's insane. When I started, I was like a kind of an exot, a girl on a trial bike. And now they are more used to it. We have sometimes more girls competing in the world round than the boys. So I'm really proud of this. We deserve the, 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 the chance to, to have competitions, to, to prove that we are also competitive. And we can show also the, the young girls that it's possible to, to race and to, to be competitive. Once you put the helmet, it doesn't matter what your gender is. What matters is our love for the sport. What matters is how we ride. And if you're good, you're good. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. And we have amazing women already in the sport, and I don't think there should be any difference between them. I think they, their way is, is easier than when I started. When I start, I feel more alone. So now it's really nice that every year there are more women involved. Not only riders, but also girls involved in, in the team. So it's, it's really nice that every year it's becoming a more female sport. Right now, I think in people's heads, this is not normal if a girl is a mechanic or a girl is a team manager, a head of a team. And I hope this comes soon. Women should be encouraged and enabled to be in engineering. It's a great job and they, they'll, you know, why wouldn't they be involved in it? And secondly, women and men need to be part of the conversation of engineering and how it's going to help our, help our world. My husband, Tom, was killed in a race in Northern Ireland in 1979. My husband suddenly not being with me made me realize there was something else I wanted to do to save lives. 
I started raising money, I started putting on auctions in, in, in Grand Prix racing and collecting money together and I, we met with Princess Anne at one point and said, you know, we'd like this to help in Africa and they, she said, oh, you know, you should go and have a look and see why you're raising money. That was when we started working in Africa, is called Riders for Health. When you're an, in a remote rural community and you've got no one who can come and help you with your health care for you or your children, the sound of a motorcycle coming along with a health worker is the most golden of, of, of sounds. And then five or six years ago, created a new organisation called Two Wheels for Life, making sure that Riders for Health is an African-led organisation and we raise money to support the work that they do. We, we trained a group of HIV positive women to ride to get out to their rural communities in, in, in Kenya and it really brought tears to my eyes. They were amazing bikers. I mean, they were just kind of, they'd get off their motorcycles, look at a difficult hazard, they'd get back on and ride. Thinking that they make a difference to people's lives and seeing a good, really good motorcyclist, those two things together, very emotional really for me. In 2009, I broke my elbow in five places. I had six operations. My doctors told me that if I continue like this, I will never hold on a handlebar in my life. So I decided it was a very hard decision to stop riding. My father said, breathe, this will be your last section in the World Championship in your life. And I was so, I was crying that much because I love racing, that I could not even see the stones while I'm riding. When I stopped riding in 2009, I was still the riders' representative for the World Championship girls. The FIM said, you can't leave, you have to stay somehow connected to the championship. I was always the one coming to them complaining about the level of the sections. So they set up a section advisor job for myself. I started traveling to all the world rounds, checking the sections and the level of the sections and the course before the girls are uh, setting off to ride them. In the first race I have had this role, I was so nervous you cannot imagine. I just know it from the rider's point of view. Being part of the organization and trying to make everything really smooth for them is like a kind of heavy on your shoulders. This organization here took us one year time to make this race happen. We were a staff of five passionate people. I was more responsible for the sporting side. That this event is running so smoothly, you cannot imagine how relieved I am. Becoming a mom has been the biggest challenge for me because it's something that nobody can uh, explain to you before. It has been amazing, but I really had to, to give everything I had to come back in a good shape. I was even better than before. It has been amazing to win the first GP in Turkey in 2021, last year. Bringing my daughter on the podium, uh, it has been incredible. I'm again out for 2022 because I'm expecting my second daughter, but I will be back in 2023 fighting for another title. I think women motorcycling is still needs a lot of work to do, but the level is increasing a lot in every discipline. So I think we can be proud. If you would talk to my younger self, I don't know if she would believe me when I told her I'm here, I'm racing here, I'm racing in Europe. I've done two seasons already. I'm, I'm progressing, I'm moving forward, and, and I'm really excited to next year and to see what I can do even more. 
to give an advice to some young girls when they start riding would be to practice with the boys, to always set up on a high level, to don't think I'm a girl and I can't do this high step. Give, take the example of the boys and just do the same. The best thing is to have goals and to, to achieve them and when, when, when you achieve these goals it's, it's something amazing because you work so hard for that and, and it's really nice, it's a big satisfaction. What I've learned in these past years is that if you work hard for something, if you believe in it and you really want it, you should never give up. It's never over until it's over.